In this Kotlin on Android development tutorial, we're going to be using array lists to generate forward and back web histories. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, so we're going to be using array lists using the Kotlin programming language in this tutorial. And what we want to do is we want to create two lists, one for the back list and one for the forward list for when you're web browsing. Okay, so we'll make a start now. One point to note here that is that in the background I've got a link to my website here. Not only does it show the video, it also shows you how to get the code. Um, you will need to sign up for the free YouTube membership to get the additional items such as how to get the code and the code drops here. Anyway, so we'll jump into the Android Studio and make a start on this. Okay, so here's the code here. The first thing I need to do here is to remove this line here. Um, it's just going to be added to our web history and I don't really want to play around with this particular value here. We just had it set up for a previous tutorial doing browsing so we can remove that. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is just add a function to get the back history first. Call fun for function, I'll just call uh, just call it get back history. It's not going to take any parameters, but it will return an argument. And the argument will be an array list of strings. Okay, I want to set up the first value here, and that's just to represent our back history that we get returned from the web view itself. So if we just call this uh, web back history, and to get that we call our web view, and it's copy back forward list. So this returns the whole list of all the places that we see and it also has like a little um, index counter just showing you where the current position in that array is. Okay, now we need to create an array list as well just to populate our backlist and I'll just call this history list and it's going to be an array list string of a string type Okay, now I'm going to create a range just to get the items here. And I only want the items related to the back list itself. So I can just call four. And we have this little increment counter here called i in. And now we set the start range from zero. And then I'm going to call until. And what until does is it will go to the final point, but it won't include that final point. And so that, that is quite useful. We don't have to decrement it. We can just call unto. Now it's just a matter of calling our web back history and the current index of the position where we are. So this current index is the page we're on. We only want the history of the previous pages viewed. That's just why we're using the current index there. Okay, now we can populate our um, history list array. And we're going to call add. And now, basically, I just want to call web back history again and get item at index. So I want to get Pacific item at index. And we use our little um, I counter there just to increment up for that. And what I want is a title there. So I want to populate, I should have mentioned that somewhere at the beginning of the introduction of this tutorial. We want to get the populate, we want to populate our array with the web titles itself. Okay, and that should be all we need to do there, but we will need to return that history list. Okay, and just before I run that, I will need to set up an on-click listener to call this function. So I'm going to cre 
create this in the on create method there and so I'll call back button and this is going to be an on long click listener so you just hold your finger on the reverse button so we'll go set on long click listener I'm going to use the Kotlin implementation it's a bit easier there now we can call our get back history and this will require the boolean true it's this particular listener expects the a boolean to be returned so we can just specify true for that okay they should be the only changes we need to make there what I want to do here is put a breakpoint there and just uh, view the history um, I will run this application then I'm going to have to just generate an history and then um, I'll press the long click and then we'll view our results so I'll start this in debug mode the applications now started let me quickly generate a uh, web list history now the web history has been generated I'm now going to do an on long click on the back press okay we've now hit the break point there Okay, so there's the history list there. I'm just going to go down to here and open this up. And there you can see the history there, which is fine. But Danny, I do have one issue with this. It's the order. It's starting at the beginning of my history and then going down to my current history. I want to reverse the order so it matches what you would normally use to see in a web browser on a on a computer for example so when you the select the back button you get the most recent history showing at the top of the list and so this order here is the opposite of what we need so we will need to fix that but before I do that I want to go into the web back history to see that so it also shows us the current index the current page we're at which is at the very end it's one after what we're seeing there and if you look at the size here it's one size larger so we'll open that up and the first element's the far same as what it is, but the last element is actually the current page, and that's the um, Android array list. But I don't want to display that because we're already on there, so we just want to display the history, the one before, which is why we use the unto and the range to remove that last item, just to keep the history list as what you would expect using a normal browser. Okay, so we're going to have to fix this order. Um, we're going to have to reverse it. So let's go back to the code. I will stop that. And let's go back into our back history there. And what Kotlin does give us, if we just call our array list again, history list, Kotlin gives us these things that Kotlin have implemented themselves in their library called extension functions. One's called reverse and that's just going to reverse the order of the items in the array okay so let's run this and see if that works okay I've now generated the same history as what we did before so I'm just going to do it on long click back press okay and so now let's just open up the history list there and that's better we've actually reversed the order of the elements in the array list so I'm now getting the one before my current position there which is the WebView archives, uh, yeah, the WebView, and then we've got the Kotlin tutorials, YouTube, back to the home page there. So this is the desired behavior I want to see for this particular backlist. We'll now move on to generating a forward list. So with the forward list, I'll keep the name quite similar. So we'll get forward history. And again, it's going to return an array list of the string type. Okay, I can just copy these two lines here and paste it into there. And we are going to use a for loop to for our range. Uh, we we'll use i again and and zero to populate the begin start of the array until now this is where things are going to change a bit because we now want 
the final elements after the current web position, the web page position. So I want everything afterwards, not before. So we have a slightly different size. So I'll call again web, um, and I'm going to need to change this name as well. This name's not good. So it's going to be changed to web forward. So we'll change that to web forward history just so it keeps a bit of context there. Okay, so we'll call web forward history and we'll put in the size there and then subtract fr from that the current position, which is the current index. And that's going to also include our current position. So we, what we do need to do here is to offset it by one, take one off, just so we keep our list to everything after our current web position there. Okay, now we can populate our history list, our way list, by calling add. And again, it'll be quite similar to the back history, so call web forward history. And it'll be get item at index. I'm just going to drop down here because what we're going to need to do here is to call the current index and then add our i, then we will need to add an offset and I'll explain why. So we'll call the web view forward history plus the current index, then we'll add i to that. Now, so we'll add i to that, but the current, the very first value of i will be zero which will be the current position of our website so we do need to add one to that and then just keep incrementing the values up from there okay and as with before and as of with before we will call the title okay and again we do need to return that oops we do need to return that history list. And I'll put a breakpoint there. I can remove that one there. And just before I call this, I will need to step up, set up our long click listener for the forward button. Forward button sets just the same as what we did on long click listener, use the Kotlin version. And now we can get call get forward history, and it does require a true to be returned, a boolean value to be returned. Okay, now let's try running this and see if we get our forward history list generated for us. Okay, I've generated my back list. To generate my forward list, I need to go back. So I'll just go back, maybe to the YouTube page. Now I'm gonna hold my finger on the long, long press on the forward button. We've now hit the history list there. I've got a history of three, so let's open that up. And what we're seeing there is the, I've gone all the way to the Kotlin on Android array list. But if I was to, at the top of my list, I've got the Kotlin tutorials um, and then the web view archives and then the Kotlin and Android away list. And if we open up our actual uh, full web forward history and we open up the history item list we can see the full history there um, if we look at the code index the current position there is where we're at we're at this position here at YouTube and all the forward items are two three and four across to there so we can use that as a reference so that's why we had to do a little bit of offsets here just to make sure we didn't include the current web page showing up in our Ford history. Okay, so that, that looks fine. So that concludes this Kotlin programming tutorial using array lists. Um, quite straightforward. We did have to use ranges just to select specific items from the array list. So we showed you an example of that. And we also had one array, one of our lists, the order of the items in that list were around the wrong way or not the way that we desired. So we did use a um, Kotlin extension function reverse to reverse the order of the items in their array, which came in quite handy as well. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. If you want to get notified of the tutorials I'm working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. And thank you for taking the time to watch this one. Bye for now.